My name is Katherine Elton, and I am the volunteer coordinator of the Danby Furniture Warehouse, the Danby Refugee Furniture Warehouse, which is now known as Circle Home Furniture Bank. My name is Blair Rennie, and I'm the Program Refugee Administrator at Danby. I am a volunteer with uh, a non-profit organization named Canadian Hazaras Humanitarian Services, that the short form is CHHS. And we usually uh, provide settlement services to the newcomers, but after um, Afghanistan fell down and Taliban took over of the country, then we started really focusing on the people that they were uh, in second countries or they needed help or they were new to Canada and um, Canadian government helped them and evacuated them. My job is to go get things, to bring them in. And then they, again, they have the refugees and they interview them, they come in, find out what their needs are. And then I take the items and I deliver them. My name is Madeline Noble, and uh, recently my husband and I started to volunteer here. Uh, we come down and sort furniture. He can fix anything, so he fixes things. And uh, I assist uh, newcomers when they come in to uh, pick out their furniture and just make them feel comfortable. And for me, when I came to here, uh, it was not easy at all, but Danby uh, and uh, the team make it easier for me, especially the warehouse they have, it's helped a lot. Like imagine myself like, uh, you know, like uh, I'm coming to the desert and I need the water. So first thing Danby provide for me is the water to drink and think about the next step. So uh, thank you very much Danby. So we serve newcomers, and those are people who have been refugees and coming from, for example, folks who've come from the Ukraine because of the war. So they might be referred to us by uh, a family who sponsored them, by a settlement worker, or it might be a family that's being sponsored by the Danby program. When we reach here, we feel like more comfort. Even though I, I was in, in very good condition in Dubai, but it's not my home. Anytime they will lay me off or, you know, it's not my home. I should back to, to my home where there's war. But here in Canada, we have that, that dream and, and we, we already made it. But it takes a lot, a lot. When the Taliban took over Afghanistan and Afghanistan fell, it, it touched Jim again, and he again put up a million dollars of his own money to guarantee that we would bring 50 Afghan families to wealth. It wasn't until the following year that the government came up with uh, the Operation Afghan Safety, which gave us uh, SAW's extra allocation spots to be spent specifically on Afghans that were fleeing because the government had agreed to bring 40,000 refugees in. And I belong to an ethnicity group in Afghanistan named Hazara. And as you can see, we have a Mongolian Asian feature. So we are easily distinguishable from uh, the other ethnicities. And we are um, also religiously, we are a minority in Afghanistan. So during the past time, uh, more than 60% of uh, my ethnicity had been genocide, just because of this, simply just because of being Hazara. And newcomers get to come in here and pick what they want in their first Canadian home. And that excites me. One of the things, reasons it excites me is that there's people in Guelph that have stuff that could probably get money for it. They could probably sell it. And they call us and they give it to us. And that's amazing. They just give us stuff. Oh, it's so great. It's like, I was born to do this. But it's tough, like it's really, really hard physical work. But mentally, it's so refreshing. Whatever uh, Dambis they are doing, it's very important. Uh, because they are touching the hearts of the newcomers. They are supporting the, the needs of the newcomers, you know? Like they, them, they think, instead of me, before I come. The story started that I had my friends, I had family members, they were in Afghanistan, and once the Taliban uh, took over the Afghanistan, everyone ran away and they escaped to the neighboring country, either to Iran, Pakistan, or Tajikistan. 
when you when you when you heard like your father in the hospital and you can't go there yeah you can see your father in like uh, in the very very serious situation and you can't do anything That's and even we cannot back to home because we we have like because of war we have this military service and it's yeah, back home is elementary and expired uh, that's the, yeah that's a hard part it's like it's like there's like any normal country if you want to serve the okay you are engineer you want to serve okay you can have you can be an officer for like one year and a half or something do the serve you know time and then you are free no no you will end up in jail or or killed i wish there wasn't a need for it because i'd love if we didn't exist because there'd be no refugees so you've got people who live in a country and you get immigrants um, but then you get refugees and they're refugees for a reason and it's horrible like you wish it didn't exist like what they're coming out of it's like oh it's so messed up they have a beautiful little place living somewhere in the world and then suddenly somebody starts dropping bombs on their heads like what the hell is that all about i like to help people i always have and i like meeting people from other countries and hearing their experiences. So down here, you never know who's coming in. They're helping you, us with the information and everything. I tried to find a job, no experience. So nobody can hire you, even here, like, even if you have experience, my brother have experience even if you in have Dubai, experience. you have to be North American experience. That's a the problem there. Private sponsorship will bring more success to Canada. All these refugees that they come, they are not on their own. They have a mentor team. So Syria, and then Afghanistan, and now Ukraine. Just like completely, it's so messed up. Like, it's a little bit of a, yeah, it's a learning experience because, you know, in Canada here, we come from a pretty nice uh, background. We haven't had too much hardship. And the other week, I asked the gentleman, the young gentleman, and I said, oh, so your mom and dad, uh, you know, they're not here, and he just said, they're gone. If I were to say that there was anything that breaks my heart about this program is the fact that there's, that I, I don't have enough spots, that the hardest thing for me to do is to say no to somebody. Uh, one moment that really struck me was when uh, a, a couple were coming and the, and the, um, the wife wanted to, to get a, a coffee maker and she had already chosen some other things and the husband was very, very resistant to her taking it. And I said, no, this, this is here for you. This has been donated. There's a community member that has said, I want a newcomer to get it. And the man just asked, why? Why are people helping? Absolutely, there is no way for me to uh, show how much grateful we are for uh, everything the Canadian government is doing and helping Afghan refugees, and especially Danby is doing. I think it's, it's really important that our community in Guelph understands there are ways they can help. There are so many needs in Guelph. Uh, homelessness is certainly an issue, and, it, and, and many of our people that are Guelphites, and, and you know, we are helping a, a, a small percentage of the population in newcomers. But to offer our community members with the, with the opportunity to contribute their time or their materials to newcomers, uh, I think that's really important. And also then to support the arrival of newcomers. No, I would like to thank you. Uh, Michael, for your effort as well, because these things is very important for uh, highlighting, highlighting the and like uh, uh, reviewing and presenting the the challenges and the, the solving of these challenges for the newcomers. For years, for decades, Hazaras didn't have voice, but today, uh, thanks to Canada, thanks to Danby, we have a voice, and that's why I say that if we have a voice here and there are people who listen to us and they hear us, we have to raise our voice. It's a global issue, but I'm just glad I get to be one tiny little cog at the very end. I get to see the results.